Hey friends, welcome back to Circuit Globe. I am Roshni and in today's video lecture, we will learn about self-induction and self-inductance. So let's proceed. <laughs> Guys, before proceeding towards self-induction, first we need to see from where this concept has originated. So the concept of self-induction is originated from electromagnetic induction. Now let's see what is electromagnetic induction. So it is a process where an existing magnetic field induces voltage and this voltage resultantly gives rise to current in the circuit. We all are aware of the fact that when current flows through a circuit then magnetic field is generated. Further, this varying magnetic field induces another current in the circuit. So basically we can say the phenomenon of generating electric current by varying magnetic field is called electromagnetic induction. This phenomena was proposed by Michael Faraday. Electromagnetic induction is of two types, self-induction and mutual induction. Here in this video lecture, we will focus on self-induction. First, let's understand what was Faraday's experiment in brief. So Faraday experimented that when a bar magnet is moved away or towards a solenoid or a coil connected to a circuit, then current begins to flow through the circuit. And as the current flows through the circuit, then the galvanometer connected in the circuit shows deflection. The deflection in the galvanometer towards left or right depends upon the motion of the bar magnet, that is, on the varying magnetic field. This current is the result of the change in the magnetic flux in the coil as this change in magnetic flux induces EMF. So this means that when magnetic field is varied, then this causes variation in magnetic flux linked with the coil and this induces EMF in it. Guys, now it's time to see how self-induction is associated with this phenomena. So basically, self-induction is defined as a phenomena where a changing current when passes through a coil in the circuit leads to cause change in the magnetic flux which resultantly induces EMF in the coil. Due to this induced EMF, current is produced in that coil and this current is known as self-induced current. To understand the same, consider the coil shown below. Here, if this current is of changing nature, then due to this changing current, a changing magnetic field will be generated and so the magnetic flux also changes. Due to the varying magnetic flux, EMF is induced in this particular coil according to Faraday's law. And once EMF is induced in the coil, then an induced current will begin to flow through the coil. Electromagnetic induction follows Lenz law, which states that the direction of the induced current is such that it will always oppose the cause by which it is produced. However, it is not necessary that the direction of the induced current will always be opposite to the direction of the changing current. Now, this seems quite confusing. So, don't worry. Let's just elaborate it. Suppose I is the actual current and I I denotes the induced current in the circuit. So if the change is such that the actual current I is increasing with time, then the induced current I I will try to retard this change in current. And in this case, if the direction of the actual current is in this way, then in order to retard this actual current, induced current will flow in opposite direction to that of actual current. While the next case is, if the change is such that the actual current I is decreasing with time, then the induced current will try to oppose the decaying nature of actual current. And so in this case, if the actual current flows in this direction, then in order to reduce its decaying, induced current will flow in the same direction. This is the reason why we have said that it is not always necessary that the direction of induced current will always be opposite to the direction of actual current. We have already mentioned that the direction of induced current will oppose the cause which has produced it. In this particular case, increasing current has produced the induced current, so it is opposing this in this way. And in the next case, the decreasing current has produced the induced current, and so it is opposing the decaying nature of the actual current. Now the question arises, why it is given the name self-induction? So the reason behind this is that the induced current is generated in the same coil where the changing current was flowing. So we can conclude here that if current increases, then magnetic field associated with it also increases and resultantly 
flux linkage also increases and according to faraday's law this gives rise to induced emf and so we'll have induced current which will begin to flow through the coil and as we have already discussed lenz law thus the induced current will decrease the primary current due to the opposing nature of the former let's now understand self inductance people generally get confused between the terms self induction and self inductance and use them interchangeably but let me tell you one thing these two terms are interrelated but not same so what is self inductance it is defined as the property of a coil that opposes the changing current flowing through it and we have already discussed that why the coil opposes the changing current that is flowing through it we have discussed recently that with change in magnetic field magnetic flux changes so the flux linkage through the coil is proportional to the current which is written by the expression n phi v is directly proportional to i on removing the sign of proportionality we will get n phi v is equals to l into i where l represents the coefficient of self induction on simplifying this equation we can get l is equals to n phi b upon i this represents the expression for self inductance and its unit is weber per ampere or henry which is represented by capital h now talking about the magnitude of induced emf so according to faraday's law the magnitude of induced emf that is e is equivalent to the rate of change of magnetic flux through the coil which is represented by this expression here e represents the induced emf phi b is the magnetic flux and d by dt represents the rate of change the term inductance is a combination of words inductor and resistance as the coil possesses resistivity towards the changing current here this negative sign shows the direction of e and so the direction of current suppose we have n number of turns in the coil so the expression will get modified as e is equals to minus d by dt n phi b where n is the number of turns in the coil we have recently discussed that n phi b is equals to l into i so on substituting the value we will get e is equals to minus l d i by dt as the expression for induced emf in the coil this shows that the induced emf depends upon the inductance of the coil along with the rate of change of current well guys this is all for now i hope this lesson turns out to be a useful one for you so please like and share this video and put on your comments below also do subscribe our channel for further updates i'll be back with another interesting topic till then have a good time bye bye